Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice of radio. So today, we're going to be looking at whether, in fact, Burnett GX could be the best partner for Zoroark. Look, at this stage, we all know that Zoroark's amazing. I keep expecting Zoroark to stop being good. But if we look at the top eight of the North American International Championships, it is super obvious that Zoroark has not stopped being good. Five of the top eight decks in that tournament featured Zoroark. So there's no argument at this stage that Zoroark is amazing. Let's just get that out there. No ifs, no buts, no maybe. Zoroark is amazing. Trade, discard one card from your hand, draw two. Three or four Zoroark out gives you ridiculous ridiculous consistency then double colorless energy 120 with a full bench 150 with a choice band and even though you're not really hitting anything for weakness i mean maybe dawn wings necrozma though that is pushing it a little bit honestly it's an amazing card two hit ko use stuff like ace roller and max potion and you are off and rolling but at the moment, we've got lots of different partners for Zoroark. And honestly, many of them are very, very good. Stefan Ivanov won the international championships over in the USA with a combination of Zoroark and Garboda. That is both the Garboda that blocks abilities and the Garboda that does more damage based on how many item cards your opponent is using. Which is like super annoying because it means they can't use abilities. And if you can't use abilities, you tend to use more item cards. And then if you use more item cards, you fall into the other Garboda. But Jimmy Penn Darvis went and got third place at that particular tournament using Zoroark with Golisopod, another stage one Pokemon, one energy, 120 damage. Kind of like Zoroark. Now here you are hitting weakness against stuff like Lycanroc, which is very, very big. And again, it's a two-hit KO, but you're using stuff like Ace Roller in the meantime. And speaking of Zoroark, Ryan Antonucci went and got fifth place at that tournament with Zoroark Lycanroc. With the theory that Lycanroc's GX attack is great, because you never really use Zoroark's GX attack, you don't play Darkness Energy. And then the ability is just a free gusting effect, so you can drag stuff up from the bench and KO them, etc. So we've got lots of different partners for Zoroark, all of which have proven to be good, or at least many of which have. The question then becomes, Burnett GX, it's getting a lot of hype. But could it actually be the best partner for Zoroark? Well, the good news is it's got 190 HP. Oh no, wait, it's a stage one. That's terrible. Because we're used to Pokemon like Buzzwall and Lapras, who are basics, having 190 HP. 190 HP on a stage one is pure, unadulterated garbage. And then you add in that it's got a weakness to darkness, and I just told you how Zoroark crushed at the international championships, so do you really want to be having a main attacker that's weak to Zoroark? Arguably not. And even if you're in a Zoroark mirror match, fine. You just play Zoroark, don't play your Burnett, because it's weak to Zoroark and gives up two prizes. That's great in theory, but it means you've just got Zoroark, and your opponent's got Zoroark and Golisopod, or Zoroark and Lycanroc, or Zoroark and Garboda, and you've just got Zoroark. You see where I'm going with this? You have a huge disadvantage in the mirror, because even if you don't play Burnett GX, you don't have a backup attacker. So there's lots to not like about it. The weakness and HP both suck. But then you look at the retreat cost of one and you think, well, hang on a second, that's better than any of the other partners. And then you go, well, hang on a second, it's got a uh, resistance to fighting, which means Boswell is really going to struggle to get a one hit KO here. Like if they're using Knuckle Impact and they're using both a Choice Band and a Diancy Prism Star, that's the minimum they need to get a one hit KO. Choice Band alone won't do it because you'll be up to 190, but Resistance kicks in. They need Diancy as well. So that's starting to look fairly promising. And then, of course, you're hitting weakness against Boswell, and that's very, very nice. Now, I've done a video about Burnett GX on its own. I'll pop a link to that in the description if you really want to dig into the card like that. 
But if you have a look at the ability here, once during your turn, if it's in the active, you may move a damage counter from one Pokemon to another Pokemon. That could be yours to your opponents, yours to yours, your opponents to your opponents, and it's not often going to do a huge amount. But then again, Meowstic saw a little bit of play. And look, Meowstic wasn't some great GX that got teched into everything. It basically was put in Gyarados decks to hit numbers. But that was only from one of your Pokemon to one of your opponents. It was actually a lot less workable than Burnett's. So actually, the ability here, I mean, it's not a reason to play Burnett. But if you've got the KO anyway, you get to move a damage counter to one of their bench. That's quite nice. Maybe you can take a mid-turn KO. Maybe you can put one of your Pokemon out of KO range. That's not bad. But it's the main attack that we really like here because it's a single Psychic Energy. 30 damage plus 10 more for each supporter card in your discard pile, but you can add more than 100 damage in this way. So essentially, you can only do a maximum 130, which generally is bad. But you had a choice ban here, you got a base of 60. That means as soon as you play 4 supporter cards, you're getting a 1 hit KO on your opponent's Buzzwall. And this is the point where you start looking at Burnett and going, hang on a second. This is great against Buzzwall. Now, maybe against Golisopod, it's not doing enough. But then again, it's still trading 2-hit KO for 2-hit KO. And obviously, against opposing Zoroark, you're not 1-hit KOing, and they resist you. And they are 1-hit KOing. But against Buzzwall, they're not doing very much damage with a Jet Punch. They're doing a base of 10. While you're getting a very easy 1-hit KO. As soon as you've got 4 supporters in the discard, 1-hit KO of a Choice Band... As soon as you've got seven supporters in the discard, one hit KO. And bearing in mind, this is a single energy. So once again, Ace Roller or Max Potion here works beautifully. One basic energy and you're off and rolling. That's brilliant. It means Max Potion and Ace Roller work nicely. It means it's easy to get it going on turn two. And if you're against a Psychic Weak Pokemon, and let's not forget here that Necrozma's seeing a fair amount of play at the moment, and for that, you only actually need three supporters in the discard, or six if you don't have a choice band. And all of a sudden, this is starting to look quite nice. Against a Garboda here, three supporters in the discard, one hit KO. Against an Espeon, four supporters in the discard with a choice band, one hit KO. There's a lot of stuff in the format at the moment that's weak to Psychic, and Burnett can come in and clean up. And it's for a single energy on a stage one Pokemon. Golisopod was good for that reason. Zoroark has been good for that reason. And to be fair, Zoroark's got a lot else going for it. But if you can be a basic or a stage one Pokemon attacking for one energy, especially a basic. I mean, look, Golisopod really is good because it hits 120 for a basic energy, meaning that you can heal it quite nicely and keep it rolling. Well, Burnett can hit 130 with 10 supporters in the discard. And it's hitting a better weakness. Because let's face it, Boswell is not nice to Zoroark. Zoroark is out there with a weakness to fighting and Boswell's crushing it. But here's my thing. Let's take another look at the top eight from the international championships. There's no Boswell in top eight. In fact, the highest Boswell was 12th place with Ahmed Ali. So actually, is Boswell a huge problem? Because, you see, if we go back to our central question here of whether Burnett is the new best partner for Zoroark, the main number one reason to play Burnett is because it's a great Boswell counter. And actually here, do we need a great Boswell counter? Because Zoroark decks seem to be doing okay against Boswell without it. Now, if we compare it to Golisopod, you can do extra damage, but it's whether it's going to be more awkward to get 10 supporters in the discard, and you might end up discarding some earlier than you want with Ultra Ball, which is a bit of a pain, or whether it's easier to just come active every turn. Golisopod has proven to be a good two-hit KO attacker. Burnett hasn't. And Burnett is a giant liability against other Zoroark decks. 
Now you do have a great GX attack here. Put three cards in your discard pile into your hand. Post rotation, we're not going to have puzzle of time. And even if we did, it would be banned anyway. So it's going to be much harder to recover stuff. We're not going to have special charge. To put it simply, post rotation, we have no way of recovering special energy. Unless you're using an attack like this. I don't think Burnett is better than Golisopod just as an attacker. I don't necessarily think you need to have a Boswell counter because we didn't need it at the North American International Championships and I think it's a massive liability against other Zoroark decks. But in a world where Zoroark cannot recover their special energy, this GX attack I think tips it over. I don't know if I'm comfortable saying it's the best partner for Zoroark and I think pre-rotation just play special charge or puzzle of time. But I think post-rotation, when I still expect Boswell to be good, when I still expect people to want to play Zoroark, but when we don't have a good way to recover special energy, all of a sudden, the pretty good but not amazing attack and the useful ability, combined with the now great GX attack, because without special charge, this GX attack becomes great, now we're pushing Zoroark Burnett into, I should play this territory. Now, maybe I'll come back in the near future, really analyzing it, giving you a list, etc. This video was really about looking at whether you should play it. Pre-rotation, I'm not seeing a great argument. The weakness really doesn't seem worth it. Post-rotation, the GX attack, I think, really comes into its own. And it's a whole different question. But I want to know what you think about this question. Do you think Burnett is the new best partner for Zoroark? Or would you rather play stuff like Golisopod or Garboda? Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. But remember the rule. Be nice. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, Or twit for some live action. Or maybe even both at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio. The bonus pods are coming thick and fast lately, and I think you should come join in. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.